Fox News alert. Mexican authorities say in just the last 15 minutes that they have just resumed searching Falcon Lake for David Hartley, the American reportedly gunned down by drug cartels last week. Well, my next guest had his own personal experience. He fled what could have been a deadly attack by armed gunmen. Dr. Richard Drake joins me live with his story. Dr. Drake, thank you so much for being here. So you yourself went out on Lake Falcon. Why? You, you had heard the reports, hadn't you, of these Mexican pirates or drug cartels, whatever they are, uh, harassing tourists and others who go out on the boats? Uh, I, I had heard reports that, that some of the fishermen were being robbed. Yes, I had. So why'd you do it? Because the fishing's great at Falcon, uh, number one. And uh, number two, all of the reports that had happened had happened deep into the Mexico side. Uh, all in the same area where the Hartleys were. It, it's the upper end of the lake on the uh, northwest side of the lake, and they were, they were back by the old town of Guerrero and the old church that people like to go and take pictures of. That's five or six miles back into the Mexico side. So uh, when we went in May, uh, you know, the dock talk amongst the fishermen was just, just stay out of Mexico and stay on the American side. So you did that, and what happened? Well, I was on the uh, American side, and I was going down. The, the, the international border is marked by these big concrete pillars, and they're about a mile apart. And uh, I was not going into Mexico, so I was on the American side, and I came out of a cove, and I was heading down the lake uh, south when, when I heard. Uh, so it, w was I in Mexico or was I in the U.S.? Uh, if I was in Mexico, I was in there by a foot. You know, I was just going from one buoy right. marker to the next. When, when I looked over my left shoulder, and uh, I was probably going about 30 miles an hour in the boat, and, and I heard some kind of yelling and, hey, hey, and, and I looked over my left shoulder, and there were three people in a bass boat, and uh, two of them had machine guns. One of them jumped up on the front of the boat, and he straddled the, uh, the, the, the butt seat that sits up on the front of a bass boat, and they started waving their guns, and they were cussing and yelling and screaming, you know, trying to get me to pull over. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, your throat kind of goes up in your, your heart goes up in your throat, and you think, my gosh, what did I get myself into? And uh, I just decided to, uh, to give it some gas and try to get outrun Get the heck out of Dodge. But then they followed you. Yeah, they chased me for probably about a mile and a half, and uh, fortunately I had a faster boat. But, uh, you know, they came out of the bushes and kind of, j just kind of ambushed me, and, and uh, you know, you're on the boat, and the, the, the motor's making noise, and the water's making noise, and and I, I never saw them come up from behind wow. me. Um, ha had they wanted to shoot me, uh, obviously they could have. When you, so when you hear Tiffany Hartley's story, does it ring true to you? Uh, it does. You know, I, th I, th I think there's still some questions that need to be answered in her story. But uh, the, the fact that that happened to me going down the center of the lake uh, and the fact that there have been reports of other fishermen and people being robbed uh, cer certainly gives it some credence. You still go out on that bait, on that, on that uh, lake, or do you get your bass someplace else now? <laughs> I haven't been back since. I don't blame you, sir. Dr. Drake, thank you so much. All the best to you. You're very welcome. Well, disturbing revelations about a suspected terrorist with ties to al-Qaeda. This is Sharif Mobley, who have, has managed to work at a half-dozen nuclear